Hello, my name is Hao Leng, and I'm going to be walking through the Citrix Workspace Environment Management uh, installation. So we're going to be installing the infrastructure services, the console, and the agent. Uh, the agent will be installed on a Zen app or Zen desktop um, client or target device, whether it's a Windows 7, 2008, uh, R2 or above, so 12, 8, uh, Windows 10, it doesn't really matter. We just have to have uh, .NET 4 installed. So since that comes as part of the later operating systems, we don't really have to worry about that. Uh, the other aspect you're going to need is a uh, server to be your infrastructure services, and you're going to need a SQL database. So we're going to go ahead and do the install here for the workspace management. The download uh, gives you a zip file. This is everything that's in there. Uh, when you run the install, it asks to do the prerequisites. These pre prerequisites are quick and easy to install. All it is is pretty much the Microsoft SQL Compact Edition. It is used to cache the database down just in case the database goes offline. Uh, it's a very simple install. It's literally the next, next, next finish with a, accepting a license agreement in there. And it is the same with the console. So we're going ahead and do this on the console. And again, we do a next, next, next finish. Very quick install. And there, yeah, there we go. All of our stuff is now installed. Now it's up to the configuration aspect. So we have to decide whether we're going to use a SQL account or a service account to run this. I'm going to be using a service account. So in database management here, uh, by using a service account, it sets me up much easier for load balancing later on. Uh, we give it our SQL instance name. In my case, this is a always on SQL always on environment. Uh, SQL does not like dashes and with the T SQL statements, so do not use dashes. You want to use underscores or no, no space or anything like that. Uh, it should pull back the correct path here. In my case, it did not. So make sure you verify that your path is correct and then configure it. Uh, the reason mine is not correct, and it's the only time I've seen it, is I've been messing with SQL recently uh, doing another bunch of testing. So that's why mine's not correct. Uh, we're going to, my, my credentials here are domain admins and SQL uh, system administrators. So I have the rights to go through with this. The first group of the administrators in the workspace environment management suite. Um, in my lab here, it's just going to be domain admins. You could create a group for it. And we are going to use our broker account. So this is where we're selecting the broker account that we're going to use. Uh, if you do want to use the SQL account, make sure SQL is in mixed mode and you specify a password here for the SQL user. Now that everything is set up in here, verify it is all correct. We create the database and it does not take long now that the database has been successfully created ding now we're going to go ahead and start to configure the the server well the first thing we want to do since we are using a sql account or a service account and we are going to be using kerberos is we want to set up the spns for it I have them pre-typed out here just because I'm prone to typos. So the first thing you do is you list your SPNs to see if you even have one. To set an SPN in Active Directory, oop, I already had one created. So if we did not have one in here, let me go ahead and get rid of mine. It needs to be a capital D. And then which one do I want to... There we go. So now it's been deleted. So now if I do a search here, now we should show that we don't have one. So you have to be a domain admin to set an SPN. In this case, we're going to go ahead and set it back to it. So we set an SPN it should come back with the updated object. So now we're going to do a list again just to make sure it's there. Make sure my AD is replicated correctly like it should on the one or two domain controllers I have. So it hasn't yet. 
we will double check it. Yep, now it, now it has. So it has replicated through. So now we're going to configure the broker service. So to configure the broker service, to create the database, we use database management. To configure the, the broker, we're going to use broker service configuration. So there's a few things we're going to configure in here. One is the database server, which we've just created. The database failover server is used for SQL mirroring. Put in our database name. Here's the ports that we're going to use. Uh, so if you want to open up the firewall, it's going to be 8284, 5, 6, and 7. Uh, each, the agents use these two. <coughs> Monitoring, which is going into directing, we'll be using that, or in the director, we'll be using that. And then the admin port is how you connect to the console. Now we want to use our broker account, so we have to set it here. Like I said, I'm prone to typos. Now we got to put in our password. Then do we want to schedule database maintenance or not? Um, that's up to you. We can go ahead and set it, and this will make sure that it sets up some jobs for us. And then the licensing, which happens to be the same server. This is the Citrix license server. Click the save configuration and it will restart the broker service for you. So now that that is done, we should be able to connect through the administration console. We click connect, localhost. And there we are, we are connected currently. So if we come and look at our licensing, we show that we're licensed. Or we configure the license server. Could be because I'm using a temporary license from Citrix that it's not liking it so much. All right, we're going to do a few basic settings in here. A few basic settings. We have our default site set up at this point. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on some basic things in here that we would normally use. The more you turn on, the more time it's going to take, of course. So we don't want to turn on everything. Always hit the apply button at every screen. Uh, we do some reconnections, usually on printers. Under the advanced options here, this is where if you want to set us, if you set anything in the product here, and you want to then later revert it, so unassign it, you need to make sure that these have been turned on or you will not be able to unassign. Set our automatic refresh, set it down low, so that way we can have some time. Things will happen a lot quicker. And then everything else we can keep as standard just for our lab environment. So some of these settings here, you know, there's an offline mode and use the cache. The cache is what the SQL always on is going to be using. Or not the SQL always on, I'm sorry. The database gets cached down to the client. So in case the database goes offline, it can still use this. So I don't necessarily want it to use the cache, even if it is online. So let's go install our agent. So the first thing we want to do is set the registry key. You can either do it through a GPO, which here is our ADMs and ADMXs for you to set up, or you can just do it directly into the registry. As you see here under HK Local Machine, Software, Policies, Norscale, agent host, there is a space, it's broker service name, and then that, uh, the server name, fully qualified domain name, so that way we can use Kerberos. If you have different sites, you would put in here site name. Since we're using the default, that is not necessary. So now we're going to do our install. I don't know why I closed it. So we're gonna launch the agent. 
It's going to install our prereqs like we expect it to. Again, these are very quick and small. Again, the agent, now that we've put that in there, is extremely quick to install, and it'll automatically cache the information. So there we go. The install is now complete. As soon as the service starts, the install is now complete. There we go. So now the last couple things that we're going to do for uh, optimization purposes is the first thing we're going to do is go to our .NET. So we're going to go to the framework, v4, and we're going to run what's called ingen update. This could take a while, up to 20 minutes, depending on what you have installed. Uh, what, what we're doing is .NET applications have a just-in-time com, uh, com, compilation of the uh, executable as it's running. What this does is it compiles it for this environment, so that way it's already optimized to be able to run, so we don't have to worry about adding some more overhead for doing the, com the compiling at runtime. So while we're just waiting for that, we have to do it in the 64-bit and the 32-bit side of the house. So this is the 64, or this is the 32-bit one. We will be doing the 64-bit one here in a second. Um, it could take a while, like I said, so we just have to wait. I will go ahead and get another one ready, so that way as soon as it is done, we can kick that off. So here's the framework, V4. And now, this one was in Without the 64, this one's with it. We run it again. Again, could take up to 20 minutes. What you can also do is, what you should do is an EQI 1 and an EQI 3. What these do is actually make sure that there's nothing in the queue to process for an update. In this case, it looks like there is. Because otherwise, it should have run already. 64-bit and 32-bit are two separate entities, so you got to make sure you do it for both. You can see here compiling North Scale, North Scale, North Scale, North Scale. That's all of the comp compiling that it is doing of those executables. So we'll just wait for this to complete. Should be almost done. So if you have things like Office, this also helps that since it is a .NET application, as well as any other .NET applications you have on the system. This will speed those up and optimize them run, running better. So it's not just a North Scale thing. Um, I find it good to do it on all of my uh, client systems. That is taking a lot longer than it should. Uh, you will see a lot of typing looks like errors. Uh, if you're used to doing PVS, those times where you click optimize for PVS and you get that command window, this is what's actually going on. Is It is a, uh, a .NET update thing that's going on, the engine. All right, so now we do EQI3. Ingen EQI1, Ingen EQI3. All right, so everything is up to date. So now the last thing we're going to run to help optimize is we are going to run a utility from the uh, Workspace Environment Manager here. It's called the Agent Cache Utility. So just to show, if we go to this location, we go to the local databases, 
this is where it stores the cache information. Since we had the configuration already done and the uh, uh, registry key in place, it automatically downloaded and cached it. So just to make sure it has the latest of everything. Again, so I'm prone to typos. I've already pre-typed it out. So it is checking to see what if there's any changes to the database. It'll come back, it should say zero of zero. But that also tells us the communication to the broker is working and everything is installed appropriately. There we go. Total changes download, zero of zero. And it last synchronized just a few seconds ago. So that is how you install the agents uh, and the infrastructure for uh, the Workspace Environment Manager. Uh, I hope this has answered a lot of your questions. Thank you.